a creature of urban myth, something that seeks to drink your blood and your ale. Sounds almost too ridiculous to be true, but at least it doesn't have a stupid name. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we are going to be taking a look at a creature that is one part Pathfinder, one part other tabletop RPG systems, and a big part American urban myth. In the early 18th century, the area known now as Washington, D.C., specifically Maryland, was settled by German immigrants coming over to what at the time would have been considered the New World. In what to them was a strange new place, tales were told of some of the monsters that might lurk in this dangerous new land. One of them was a creature originally called the Schnellergeist, which ultimately became bastardized into the Snallygaster, was a somewhat draconic, lizard-like avian creature that would silently swoop down from the skies, pick up its prey, and retreat back to its forest homes. In most tellings of the story, this creature had long octopus-like tentacles that it kept contained in its beak that would come out and they would suck the blood of its prey. Pretty over-the-top, standard urban legend stuff. This urban myth prevailed for a couple hundred years, as recently as 1909, there were newspaper articles about the Snallygaster Local residents described an enormous creature with long, leathery wings, hook-like steel claws, and of course, an enormous eye set in the middle of its forehead. It was described as making a sound that resembled a locomotive whistle. These wild rumors and legends spread so far that it got to the point where the Smithsonian Institution was even offering a reward if someone could bring in a pelt. That's a real-life fetch quest put out by an institution for a mythical creature. Sounds pretty crazy, and ultimately things did come to a head where it was, of course, revealed that these stories and sightings were all part of an elaborate hoax put on by the creators of that specific newspaper because they were trying to increase readership, as you did in 1909. But this being D&D we can take these crazy tales and see what that might look like if it were true. What if there was a giant avian lizard-like creature with blood-sucking tentacles that had a penchant for drinking ale, and then of course terrorizing the landscapes when it was drunk on casks of wine and beer stored in the cellars of the local tavern? Well, I'm here to answer that question. So today we're going to talk about just exactly what this creature can do in battle and a few changes I may have made based on the original creature as it appeared in Pathfinder. And then of course we're going to talk about some plot hooks and some ways that you can actually use this creature in your game. So without further ado, let's start off with So the first thing to note about this creature is that it is pretty fast. I mean, walking on the ground it only has a movement speed of 20 feet, but once it gets up in the air it has a move speed of 60, which is extremely aggressive. Especially for a creature in its CR range, because I've got this guy set at CR 3, so it's meant to be a pretty significant challenge for lower level parties, but you could have two or three of them against a mid or somewhat higher level party. Now their primary means of attacking is with their beak and their claws. They have two claw attacks and a beak attack, but they're not going to simply stand in front of somebody and trade blow for blow. These creatures like to use their extreme speed to fly and literally dive bomb down onto people, and they get a similar to the uh, Minotaur's charging attack, they get a swoop attack that allows them to cause extra damage when they're literally moving directly down, dive bombing on top of their target. Their claw attacks do exactly what you would expect claws to do. They tear and rip at their opponents and cause a pretty decent amount of damage. However, their beak attack is where this creature starts to become a little bit more than just some kind of large animal and a bit closer to some kind of monstrous creation. See, it will bite down with its sharp beak and cause a bit of piercing damage. That's pretty normal. However, within its beak is where it houses this whole mess of tentacles, which will then begin trying to grapple its target and also suck their blood simultaneously. So not only is it causing a bit of extra damage if it connects with that beak attack, it's also grappled the target. 
From here, the Snallygaster has a few options. It can pick its target up and take them into the air, trying to damage them further away from their allies and then potentially drop them, causing even more damage. It's a little DM pro tip. The best way to kill players at that level is with fall damage because scaling is not kind if you are less than level three. But on top of that, while it's carrying its prey off into the air or away from its allies, it can also use a special attack called Exsanguinate, which foregoes its claw and beak attack, but literally just digs its tentacles into the prey and just starts sucking out massive amounts of blood, causing just a crazy amount of necrotic damage. You do, of course, get to make a save against it, but it's a bad time. So basically what you'd expect from a beast-like creature with, of course, that monstrous twist in the form of the tentacles. So that in and of itself can make for a pretty fun combat encounter. There's lots of dynamic options you have as a DM for how you want to deploy this against the party. They can use kind of ambush tactics to strike at a party member who might be a little bit away from the rest of the group when they get the chance. Or you could just have two or three of them swarming the party if they invade their territory where a nest might be located. But the thing that I find most fascinating about this creature is actually when we get into some of the twists and turns that the legend takes, and it's inspired some different ways that I think we can use this creature to great effect, at least narratively. So let's talk about some. So one oddity about the Snallygaster that honestly ranks pretty high on my list of monster quirks is that they like to get absolutely wasted. I'm not talking mildly buzzed or casually tipsy. The Snallygaster is an absolute unit of destruction when it comes to crushing beers. They down ale so fast it would make a dwarf blush. Snallygasters are the frat boys of every monster compendium that's ever existed. If they could speak any language aside from a horrible mess of garbles that comes out of their stupid tentacly mouths, all they would be saying is, yo bro, where are the beers? because the Snallygaster is trying to get annihilated every weekend, weekday, Monday morning. Let's get it. I can't even overstate how much the books and lore and just weird stories have stressed this one thing, is that this creature has a problem, and honestly, it's quite tragic. See, every fall when the fruit begins to rot and starts to ferment in some natural places, they drink that up and they get so drunk that they just go on a drunken rampage across the countryside, literally looking for more alcohol and also killing everything in their path. But of course, when the intelligent races such as humans or dwarves or elves or whatever small town happens to unfortunately be located nearby, starts fermenting their fine beers and ales and meads and wines or whatever their culture happens to make, if a Snallygaster catches scent of that, also I should mention they have keen smell as one of their traits, they will come barreling through every tavern wall like the Kool-Aid man looking for that sweet alcoholic nectar. And this I think might be one of my favorite intros to a campaign to mix up the you all meet in a tavern kind of trope. Because maybe you all do meet in a tavern and things are going great. No one's talking, it's an awkward first session, the edgy rogue is trying to figure out how they can incorporate their character to the party because they made someone who doesn't like to talk to other people. When suddenly a giant avian terror with a single large eye and a beak full of tentacles bursts through the wall and just starts snatching up every bit of ale it can get while just clawing and massacring anyone in its way and then just drinking that without even really paying attention to anyone else at first, maybe fighting back against the party while they try to stop it and then just running off into the night is like the best intro to a campaign ever. There's your first quest. The tavern owner's upset, the town is upset, people are dead. And your heroes seem to hold their own against this creature. So the town is willing to pay and you'd be local heroes if you were able to stop whatever that was and bring it back dead or alive. Preferably dead though, let's be honest. But again, as I always say, you do not have to use this stuff if you just like this creature, but you don't really have a way to fit it in your game, they could easily be residents of the Underdark or the jungle if you're running a campaign set in Chult, for example. I mean, this thing's so monstrous, it looks like it might even be the creation of some kind of mad wizard or lich. Looking at you, Thessalar. But this whole quirk of it seeking to consume alcohol is so fascinating to me too, because if the party learns that that's what it's after, they can use that as a tool to bait it out and kind of set traps with a keg of ale or whatever's available. 
This also might be useful if they have a ranger in the party because they can kind of track it going where they know if some of this fermented fruit might be. Or of course just following the terrible trail of destruction it leaves in its wake. I also find it hilarious that the motive of this monster is that it just partied way too hard. And if you're a Snallygaster, apparently the party just never stops. Another way you could use this, which might be a little bit more out there, would be as a potential mount for some kind of smaller race. And by smaller, I mean maybe halfling sized or even kobolds, goblins, something like that. I think goblins actually would fit very well because it would create this kind of interesting dynamic where A, you have these creatures being used as mounts, which totally changes up combat in the way that might happen. But just in a social interaction perspective as well, it creates this kind of interesting tension because maybe this community that uses them as mounts doesn't allow alcohol on the premises of their kind of camp or whatever the situation is because they're keeping Snallygasters. So if the party doesn't know this, maybe at some point while they're staying in this camp, they open up a flask of mead as adventurers are known to do. And that just sets in motion a very unfortunate set of events. Or it could be a simply as small as an interesting world building point where they're going into this camp and they're told, don't bring any alcohol if you have any with you. And maybe they're like, oh, why? And they're like, just don't do it. And they might explain themselves or maybe they won't depending on how you wanna play the situation. And I guarantee if you don't tell them why, there's always gonna be that one party member who says, I'm not doing that. And thus the dwarf barbarian led to a total party kill. But in any case, that is the Snallygaster. I love this creature. I think it's so awesome, just in terms of how simple it is to use, but also how complex its whole background and history is. And I think that monsters that have that kind of origin are just fun as a DM to kind of drop in your world and see how it might affect things. If you do want to use this creature, you can find the fifth edition stat block in the form of a Google document linked in the description right below here. And if you are one of my lovely patrons, you can get the monster manual style kind of Photoshop stat block to look like a page for the monster manual on the Patreon page or in the Patreon Google server. I'd also like to just give a huge shout out to user Neko Gecko on our Discord who recommended this monster in the monster suggestions chat there. So thank you so much. And if you have any suggestions for monsters you'd like to see covered in the future, please leave a comment. Get at me on Twitter, get at me on Discord. I write down every suggestion I get and there is a huge list of them, but I'm always looking to add to that list. So thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it immensely and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then. Bye.